Greetings, friends. Welcome to the Pin Tool Podcast. My name is Al Wayman, owner of Creek Road Pottery in Laceyville, Pennsylvania, next to the cold Tuscarora Creek. Pull up a chair around the wheel as we discuss topics concerning the art and craft of pottery, good books, storytelling, marketing, and creating work that matters for folks who care. Greetings, friends. Welcome to the Pin Tool Podcast. My name is Al Wayman, and it's a pretty nice day here in Laceyville at Creek Road Pottery, and the garden is coming up. I I planted it. I've been waiting a few weeks. I think it's been maybe a week and a half, and uh, we've been watering it. Uh, there's been some good rain. The lettuce is coming up. Um, I've seen a few radishes. So what I need to do, friends, I need to get a fence around that garden because I seen our rabbits are in the lawn and running around and uh, these these wild bunnies, they're hardly ever scared of us. Um, they're going to be munching down if I don't if I don't get things fenced in. So at the pottery shop, um, I've been working on custom orders and also... Uh, I have events coming up for Founders Day in Tunkhannock in one more week. So I need to do a firing, I think, Monday for that show. I have a bunch of mugs I'm going to fire out, and then I'll collect work and start packing it up for that. And then July 1st, Gallery 41, I'm doing a show with a photographer in Owego, New York. And then at the end of July... I need to start getting ready for the Lake Cary days in Lake Cary, PA. So I'll be taking a bunch of work up there. I, I'm i thinking about donating uh, a few beer mugs for their raffle. Sometimes they ask for a, for a raffle from artists if they choose to or not. Um, I, I, I usually like to do that because not, not to get my name out at all because... That's not a very good way of doing it. Giving your work out is never a good way to get your name out. I just want them to remember me so I'm invited back. That's the only reason why I'm doing that. So I think a lot of times we get misdirect get misdirected when folks say, Hey, do you want to donate for uh you know publicity or for my charity to get you know, your name out there, uh, you won't get your name out there doing that. <laughs> you find it never pays off. So if you're donating to charity, do it for charity, you know, do it for kindness. And, um, but for this, I'm going to do it for other, other reasons, you know, hopefully, uh, they'll enjoy those mugs though, because, um, I'm going to create beer mugs. Hopefully I'm going to put the Lake Terry name on it. Um, let's see projects I'm working on some shave bowls. I need to finish those up. Those have been gone probably far too long. I got some shea brush handles that I need to work on and get the knots in those. Um, I've been working on some mugs. I got those drying. I need to handle them after work tomorrow. So I got to work at the paper factory. I had to work for two days. Tonight is going to be the last night of nights. And then I'll have a day and a half off. And then I need to do... Uh, fire out the work like I said for that show prep so today's topic down in the studio we're going to be talking about doing the work um, showing up as a professional and a lot of times our hobbies uh, we don't like to think that they are our jobs and you can be a professional without it thinking it's like your job but maybe sometimes we need to think of it and treat it as our jobs uh, especially if we're selling, because once we exchange money for something, it does end up being a job in some way. And I noticed that a lot of artists may avoid custom orders for this reason, and they like to pick and choose what they sell, so they make up a bunch of things and maybe just sell what they have. But over the years, I kind of learned that custom orders can be a way for you to specialize and to have people come find you to build things which is great because when everybody is not buying mugs anymore uh, they're coming to find you to do special things and times are tight right now and artists need to sell work 
And so custom orders, whether you like it or not, may be a way to do those kinds of things. And in order to put yourself out there, uh, you may need to be more professional and think more like a professional when you're creating and selling work. So I'm going to be up front. I'm horrible at it. So we're going to get through this together. So grab your pin tool, meet me in the studio, and uh, pull up a chair around the wheel, and we'll be talking about doing the work as a professional. All right, I'll see you down there, friends. Greetings, friends. Pull up a chair around the wheel. Um, we're going to have a conversation on showing up and doing the work, thinking about it as a professional. So that's a pretty long title, but I'll shorten it down <laughs> for the podcast in some way. I'm going to talk about three things that, that I can do and that maybe you can do to show up and be more professional and think of our work and what we do as being professional uh, to maybe help us. And, and friends, like I said before, I am terrible at doing this because I probably need to work on all of these. I work a full-time job at the paper factory. And whether I want to show up or not, I need to show up if I want to still get paid. And I need to show up bad days. I need to show up on good days. I need to show up when it rains, when it snows. And sometimes, um, even when I might not feel all that well, but... Just enough, just enough, you know, maybe to not take a sick day. I still need to show up. So when you show up, you may work with a team of people and you don't want to make their lives miserable. So you have to put on a show, maybe just do the work the best you can. It needs to be satisfactory. It needs to meet expectation. But many times done is better than perfect and showing up is simply half the battle and being a bit professional about it can make things go a little bit more easier. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that right now. So showing up as a professional. So when you hire a plumber to show up to fix your pipes, like you don't care if that guy, you know, maybe is having a bad day and he's grumpy. Like you just need your toilet to stop leaking. And you need that pipe to not be plugged so you both can get on with your own lives so that you can pay the guy. Um, if he's friendly, uh, you may feel better about paying him and enjoy having him around. And you might even have him back the next time you spring a leak in the old hot water heater. So another thing that um, you can do to show up as a professional, you want to do your best work and your good work and be good at what you do and make the experience for the customer as pleasant as possible. So people don't like to hang out with grumpy people. I mean, if you're on the airline and you show up at the airline to get your ticket and the sales rep is all grumpy, like that's going to make your trip miserable. And um, I think that maybe sometimes having a smile and getting through it, even though maybe you don't feel like it, uh, might be the proper thing to do. Now, I'm not saying that burnout is not a real thing. And there are some days when I didn't show up as a professional. I was tired. I didn't do my best work and bad things happened. Like everything just fell apart. Maybe I rushed something and something blew up in the kiln and I had to do a remake for a custom order. But all those things uh, can happen, but sometimes um, they can be avoided. If you're just a little bit more professional and you show up for yourself. I mean, if you're showing up for your job, how much more better, more better, how much more should we show up for ourselves? I need to do that. There are some times when there are some projects maybe I just didn't feel like doing. And I know at work, I would never say, oh, I don't feel like doing these projects. I'm just going to procrastinate and not do it. I would have a real bad time. And if I did that, I probably wouldn't work there very long. <laughs> so show up for yourself as a professional. Also, number two, treat your art and your artwork as a profession and that you're a professional. And a lot of times people may see their work as a hobby and they come across that way and then they get offended when people ask them, so is this your hobby? You'd be like, no, nah, this is my livelihood and I make art and 
some people they they do the work full time and i really am um i really am in awe of those people who are able to make it full time doing their work and uh i have a lot of respect for people like that so those people even more need to show up as a professional and to treat their art in a professional way so it comes across as your profession and this leads to no need to be authentic. And, and this is a tough one because everybody says, oh, I wear my feelings on my sleeve. It's just the way I am. And what you see is what you get. And I'm just unique in that way. And I'm, and I'm authentic. I'm just being authentic. Well, two-year-olds are authentic also. They cry about everything. Their emotions get the best of them. They throw fits. They sit on the floor and cry in aisle three at the at the at the supermarket. And so that might not be the way to go. So I think that in our um, showing of being authentic to maybe uh, show people, hey, you know, like I have problems too. We can share a little bit of that because we definitely want our customers and our communities and our groups that we're building and our customer base to have empathy for us. And we also want to show empathy, but being authentic about everything uh, can be a bit damaging simply because if your plumber shows up <laughs> and he's being authentic, you could have a real bad time. Like he's going to tell you about all his personal problems and everything. And he's going to, he's going to swear in front of your kids when the, when the wrench slips and he, bust his knuckles, and it's just going to be a bad time. So treat your art as a professional, show up as a professional, and no need to be authentic all the time, 100%. And number three, fake it till you make it. Now, I don't really care about this term because a lot of times, um, a lot of damage is done by people who don't really know what they're doing and haven't practiced enough at it, but are faking it. And it's okay to have errors and mess up as long as those errors and mess ups are not fatal errors. But when we're talking about being a professional and faking it till you make it, um, you better dress and act the part and be happy to be there for your customer to make your customer's experience a positive one so that they come back and buy things off you. So I know a lot of people who uh, visit shows and uh, they have said to me, "Well, you know, I've been past this booth where the person looked grumpy and there was no person there hardly. Um, I really liked the work, but I didn't buy anything because this person just seemed to be like pretty miserable. So try to make the buying experience um, good for your customer, even if you have to fake it till you make it. Um, still do the work. And friends, I have a bad time with this one. Still doing the work, showing up and being your best self in the situation that you can. And having done, uh, having projects done is better than having projects that are perfect. So done is better than perfect. If you listen to the pod, the um, Product Boss podcast, um, Jacqueline and Mina over there always talk about done is better than perfect. And so that's one of the lessons I'm working on right now. I had this custom order that I had a real hard time with, friends. I put it off, put it off, and um, the customer was so gracious and waiting. Um, I tried finding other people to do it. Uh, but to no avail, I'm not saying I'm awesome or anything. Maybe it was, maybe it had a whole lot of things to do with pricing and shipping and all of that. And um, he came back and he said, oh, you know, I, I can't find anybody else, even though you recommended other people. Um, can you do this? And, and I can't say no to anybody. So I got this project again. And it's forced me um, to practice all these things still showing up like I do for my job at the paper factory, showing up and doing the work and just getting it done. It, it may not be the most pleasant of tasks. It may be like cleaning the toilet or doing the dishes, like all those things, they need to be done in order for things to run smooth. So um, some jobs you're not gonna like doing, but you still have to show up and you can be a professional and show up and do that. And also, I mentioned the customer experience. So if you sell work, um, you're having that interaction with customers and community building 
And you're there to maybe make the customer uh, feel happy about what they did or what they purchased off you to feel happy and feel that there's value in your work. And you can do all that by being more professional and still showing up, even though sometimes you might not even like the piece that the way it came out, but you show it to them and they're happy with it and you could go over with it. You can go over it with them, but, and, and you may not be happy with yourself all the time. You may not be happy all the time, but I still have to show up at the paper factory, uh, even when I'm not happy and my team expects me to meet expectations and so to the customer if you're selling work. They expect you to do a certain thing for them and something that they find value in and that they're gonna pay you for. So, custom orders. And I talked a little bit about this earlier and I realized it more and more and I also put off custom order friends. I said, I'm only gonna sell what I make. And a lot of times that can be the easy way out. But when things get hard and people stop buying the things, the things that everybody buy, the things you made for everybody might not be the things that can carry you through when the economy's bad or um, it's seasonal. So custom orders can create and frame out for you a niche to where people come to you as a professional to buy things off you that they might not be able to find in that style elsewhere. So I had a few uh, requests for plate settings and friends. I dislike plate settings, but the family that I'm going to be making it for uh, is so kind and that added to it. So they said, take as long as you'd like and do it up. So I need to work that because they came to find me because they like my style of mugs and bowls. And so they asked me to help them solve a problem in finding a nice plate setting that had the farmhouse feel for their new house that they're renovating. So I need to be a professional and I need to get on that project. And I'm sure from that project, and being professional, more people might come looking for plate settings. I don't know if that's what I want to do or not, but it may happen. So there you go, friends. Hopefully you found this podcast helpful. If so, shoot me an email at creekroadpottery at gmail.com. Visit the website, creekroadpottery.com. In the blog section, I got some writings up there, updates, and also some fiction stories about my hometown, and I think you will like it. I've been trying to post one a month, and I'm working on a story right now about Smoky Red the hobo. So that'll be interesting. So if you get on there, farming stories, all kinds of stuff mixed in with what I'm doing here. So be well, friends, take care and do what you can. Done is better than perfect. Those perfect projects are probably projects that never got done. Do the work, be professional and put something out there for the world to enjoy. Take care of yourselves and each other and have a great day.